Okay, just finished work, gonna head into Central now and meet Mike. Today me and Mike are gonna swap cameras, so I'm going to be using his Canon R6 and he's gonna be using my Sony a6500. Just gonna play around with each other's equipment. Uh, and yeah, quite exciting. I haven't, I haven't used the Canon camera in ages, so let's see how it goes. Boom, here we are, one of the Maybe... I'm trying to think how to compose this shot. I'm sure there's something interesting here. Oh. Maybe up this way. Oh, I've got a... Oh, check this out. I've got a flip out screen. Now I can finally use it. Oh, okay, okay, I see. Okay, I'm going to go to f1.8 just to get as much blurriness as I can. Let's point the camera up. Wait, if I do it like this, I think the camera can actually, the GoPro can actually see it. Point it up, focus on the lantern, boom. That's a shot. Look at that. Having a fully articulating screen is actually such a luxury. I used to shoot on the Canon uh, back in my nightclub photography days, but yeah, didn't realize how much, how much of a difference it makes. I'm loving the flip out screen already. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm, I'm missing the flip out screen already. <laughs> what I am loving is that 1.4. I it's can great. immediately tell the difference. Ah, oh, yeah, the blurriness. And it's very responsive. I press the shutter, it immediately, like, no messing around, it takes the photo. Mm. And that sounds really, really simple. Like, <laughs> on Canon, you have to really press it in. Mm. To... Oh, I just, I I just accidentally took a photo, that's how easy. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I get that. Okay, let's have a look at these ducks. Actually, I'm gonna focus inside on this, on the guy. How we do? Oh, police! Love a good police shot. Um, right, shutter speed down slightly. Oh, it's hunting a lot. Okay, that helped. The thing I'm appreciating is the, the sort of haptic feedback of these uh, of this camera. Like whenever you press the button, it's quite a satisfying feeling. Oh, oh just uh, just for fun, I'm a street photographer. Yeah, is that okay? Mm. Can you smoke? Thank you. Wait, do you speak Chinese? Yes, Chinese. You know, you know. Chow people take photos of you. Obviously sometimes when you're doing street photography you can have slightly awkward interactions but it's not always the case. And those people are quite nice about it. I do miss my 56mm um, which is the 85mm equivalent on the full frame just because just because for street photography I quite enjoy having quite a zoomed in lens because it means that you don't have to get super close to the subject to take a photo of them which is obviously a little bit more awkward um, when you're doing street stuff. Maybe I can do this. Okay, that's nice. Just line up in the middle, focus on the people. Maybe uh, shutter speed slightly higher. What I am noticing is how good the Canon R6 is in low light. I'm on aperture 1.8 and a shutter speed of 1 over 500, which is such a quick shutter speed. Normally, I would only use this kind of shutter speed during the day when I'm trying to capture like a high speed motion type shot, say a skateboard or something. Oh, that's a photo. Quick, quick. Um, but because the sensor is bigger on the full frame camera, it lets in a lot more light compared to the APS-C. And because of that, I can actually have quite a high shutter speed while taking pictures at, in low light. Let's go shot of this guy, chilling. 
Oh, you notice this? Okay. I remember I had it in the car. It's um, Oh, maybe this restaurant. This looks quite cool. I kind of like the dude house just chilling over there. Hello. This is Lily. Hi. Hey Lily, nice to meet you. How's it going? <laughs> oh, crab party. That's actually kind of a cool shot with the bubbles and stuff. Oh, that is cool. Maybe you should like crop him a bit. Straight from these two. Boom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. Oh, I like, that, I that, like that these one. Ones. That one's really nice. Yeah, I like them. Oh, quick bus coming. Even with half a second, it was like, it was yeah. fine. You can oh, see how sharp nice. the under yeah, yeah. gun shot is. Yeah. Alright, happy with those. Boom. Two, three, four, five. See? That's kind of cool. I just love how London this image looks. You got the underground, uh, you got the underground sign, which obviously screams London, and you got the red double decker, which is even more London. I'm gonna use this to stay stable. We just spotted a very colourful alley across the street and I'm not going to say no to that. I'm quite happy. I just got, a, just got a picture of this guy pushing his bike in the shadow. I know, I saw the shadow. I just missed it. <laughs> you got it. Right, right. Look at me. Cool. Oh, that would be a cool mist filter shot. Unfortunately, I didn't have it on. It's not bad. It's so high up. We'll wait for him to hand the product. Actually, no, that's fine. Do you know what? This would also be a sick mist filter shot. But unfortunately, don't have one on today. Find a good composition for this tower bridge shot. Um, make sure that all the shadows are in there. What should I focus on? Maybe that golden peak? It looks like everything is in focus, even though I'm on F2. If I go on F1.8. I do miss, one thing I do miss uh, is the bokeh. Like, even though it's only one stop, I can tell the difference. Okay, let's see if that's a cool edit. We've got some people here. One of these. What are we saying? We've both got the exact same photo. Yeah. Oh, that looks nice. I like that. It's a bit wider on mine because I'm on the yeah, 50. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's great. Good idea, Mike. Good spot. <laughs> right, see you, mate. See you later. Right, now we're heading home. The Canon R6 is a really impressive camera and I really enjoyed playing around with it tonight. I immediately noticed the impressive software and hardware capabilities of this camera. So software-wise, you know, the autofocus was really good. Every time I was taking a shot, I could tell how good the face detection autofocus on this camera was. It really made my life a lot easier when trying to get the right shot. Especially during street photography, when you sometimes try to capture somebody walking past you, that autofocus comes in clutch. In terms of the hardware, so I'm normally used to shooting on an APS-C Sony camera. So the sensor is smaller, which means it lets in less light. Now the Canon R6 is a full frame camera, therefore it lets in more light, 
and as a result it's better in low light conditions. So one distinct moment when I realized this was when I noticed that my shutter speed in Chinatown was actually at 400 and my ISO was not particularly high. Normally when I shoot with my Sony 6500, my shutter speed is usually around 1 over 100, maybe 1 over 80 if it's a bit darker, with an ISO of about 1000, 1600. That means that if someone is walking past at like a brisk pace, they're probably going to be blurry. Whereas with the full frame Canon R6, I'm able to take high shutter speed photos in low light conditions, which means that even if somebody is moving at night, I can still capture a crisp in motion picture. In terms of the lens that Mike gave me, it was a 50mm f1.6 lens. Now, I'm really not used to using that focal length and I've really struggled at times to find the right composition for my shots. That's got nothing to do with the camera though, so I won't touch upon that further. Whenever you use a new lens, you'll get better with practice as you get used to the focal length and kind of figure out how far away you need to stand from your subject. An issue that I ran into as soon as I got home is I realized that my Lightroom was not the most latest version. It wasn't actually able to edit any of the Canon R6 CR3 files. So I had to download the software called Adobe DNG Converter to downgrade the images to a format that Lightroom can read. Fireworks. And as a result, I wasn't able to play around with the colors as much and I wasn't able to bring up the shadows as much as I'd hoped to, but hopefully the edited photos are still looking good. Now, huge shout out to Mike for letting me use his camera. He also sent me his Moody Preset Pack version 2.0, which I used to edit the majority of the images in this video. So if you like the look of them, go check out his website and um, get his presets, yeah. And to finish things off, 23 Great Shots Lens 24. Interesting name there, buddy. Uh, he asked me if I have any recommendations for a good sharp prime lens for the Sony a6400. Very short answer, Sigma 56 or to be honest any of the Sigma Trio is great depending on what kind of shots you want to get. I recommend all of them and here is a video of me using it. Hope you enjoyed as always and I'll see you in the next one.